Welcome back to Black Clover Anime Review, episode number 47. We are doing the 97th episode of the series, Overwhelming Disadvantage, and the 216th chapter of the manga, Power Balance. This one pretty much covers the rest of chapter 250, pretty much the almost the entire thing, the last like 16 pages, the whole thing. The entire 151st chapter, yeah, the entire thing, didn't skip anything this one. It finished up 169, I'd say about the last two or three pages, and I looked it online, and I just looked it up, that this thing covered, like, for chapter 170, the first 14 pages. Yep. What happens in this episode? Basically, it's about three different things that happen in this episode. Well, for one thing, we have brief. We have the conclusion of the Yumi versus Charla fight, which ends in a draw. We also see... So taking the black spear, which has the body of the Wizard King, buries it in some area in, in the royal capital that she dug and has her golem basically uses the golem to bury the thing. And she comes back and sees Yumi basically and tells her like, bury in the same place. Okay, cool. And, and of course he he also like before while all this is going on, she's burying it, burying the black spear. He pretty much unleashes his, his dimensional slash on Charla, which apparently did actually sort of slice through her attack. It kind of partially buried him, but it basically didn't affect her much at all. It looks like her cape was destroyed, and it also sliced off her gauntlet. Yep, her arm guard that she's basically not wearing, yeah, that is pretty much been sliced up, basically sliced in half. And that pretty much ends that fight. Yep, we also have... Noelle and her cousin, I don't remember this guy's name, it's, he's basically, he's Mimosa's brother, the one who, let's see if I can find his name, Kirsch. Yeah, Kirsch, Momoso's brother. Well, they take him on briefly, and then they have to run away because the power is too overwhelming for them. Oh, yeah, and when they have Luck, the, the two opposite possess Luck and Ben, they sort of embrace like they're former lovers, even though they're both guys. Probably because Luck's, the elf that possesses Luck is probably a woman. And, of course, he toss, of course the elf who possesses Luck toss out the power of his robe, Showing up that possibly wears a dress? I don't know. It's impl heavily implied that this that this this might be either like a little boy or might be a girl. I'm not sure who is possessing luck here. And of course, Kirsch uses his cherry blossom magic to basically deflect it. And of course, no Noelle does her sea dragon's lair magic or spell, and they have to get away because of powers to a woman. In the case of... Now, they don't show what's going on with Mosa and her, her team turning on her because of this by elves. They don't show that this episode. Nope, that's completely absent for this episode. They do show, like, the small... Like, the rest of the episode is just we have Mimosa, we have Marilo... Ma, 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 how do you pronounce this woman's name? It is... Marilonia. Yes, Marilonia who is fighting Lyra, and, of course, well, he, of course, he can, he talks about the, he also, of course, she confirms that they can't exactly negotiate with him, but the guy is no liar, and he can tell people lie, and for what he mentions to Asha, basically, Asta, what he said a couple episodes back, he was telling the truth. He was pretty serious about it, and he does not believe that from because he can tell because he's a liar. He can tell if he was lying. He does... He doesn't trust Asha, but... Asta, but... He does think he's telling the truth. He's not lying about what, what he said about creating a kingdom of... A free kingdom, basically, with no prejudice. Yeah. Despite the fact he, he, he wasn't lying about that. Mm hmm And, of course, well... They fight for a little while, and then Rill shows up. Yes, blasting to the freaking ceiling. Though it's not him, it's 
somebody else. Yeah, the one who's possessing Rail is Le is is uh Lyra. It's Raya, basically. Marilla is facing Lyra, who this way like Asa tells him basically knows who he is. Like he's like Lyra's like, who the heck are you? I've never seen you before. That's what he's like. He's like, you you're you're a magic knight captain, and I'm your friend. He's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And then of course, well, they fight for a while. And then four more elves show up, like three more elves show up, and the, these are from Rel. This is from Rel's squad. His whole squad was turned into frickin' elves. And then of course, Merritt Miller's like, "Yeah, I try to get try to get away because well, to a woman." So I take she takes her uses her flame, like lion claw magic, to pick up Asta and Zora by the head, throw them out the nearest doorway, crush it. He's like, yeah, and Asta basically can't fight because they're comrades. And, of course, Marilyn is like, I'm going to kill you all. Yep. I'm trying to think, is that pretty much it? Oh, yeah, also the the, the spiritual night caster, one who's casting the 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 magic jack black gaming. He's an elf now, somehow. Yeah, he's been turned into an elf. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything else I missed. Oh, yes. The former captain of the Purple Orcas is... Because of all the ruckus, of all the the, the, the elves possessed people, he gets out of his cell and he runs into an old comrade of his who he kicked out of his squad when he was captain. And apparently these two have something in common. They hate Asha. They refer to him as the anti-magic brat. And then they see another guy possessed by an elf. Don't know who this guy is. They fight him briefly. And of course he's defeated by the other guy who uses chain magic. He gets beaten pretty easily. Then they just walk away and decide to do whatever. They, they do show up later on in the arc. And they're perfectly fine. They do survive. Not, not, nothing really bad happens to them at all. I'm not sure what happens to the chain guy. But I know like, the four Poker Ogres captain... Yeah, he's still alive by the, by the most recent chapter, so he's fine. Mm. Oh yeah, the episode ends quite interestingly. With Fergolion's arm is twitching. Yep. Thus setting up the events of next week's episode. Which, from looking at the teaser, it looks like it's going to cover the rest of chapter 170. And probably going to cover 171 and 172. That's my personal guess. That's, right. That's probably what I think is probably going to cover next week's episode. Just basically two full chapters and the rest of this chapter. i got to say for this episode, they did a pretty good job when it comes to adaptation-wise. I mean, from what I can tell, they did change a couple words of dialogue here and there. But mostly, they kept everything in. And they did a really good job with it. Now, this is not the first series I've seen where they've done this. Where they do a like, couple chapters here and then have a little bit of stuff later. One Piece did it very recently, toward the end of the whole cake arc. Basically, stuff with... When they had Luffy take on, I'm trying to think, what was the guy's name? Uh, the guy who was the second son of Big Mom. Yeah, they take something from a later chat to put it in the episode. And there's one other series I've seen like this, and that's Seven Deadly Sins. They actually did that series as well, where they actually, like halfway through one arc, they actually are adapting another arc while the arc is still going on. Because they probably need a meanwhile, what's going on here is there, people. I would not be surprised in that particular series when they get to the Holy War arc. They might do the same thing with that when doing this arc as well. Even though that's 50 chapters, this is like over almost 80 chapters. It is by far one of the longest arcs I've ever seen for a series. Not the longest arc I've seen, no. I would say probably the longest arc I've probably seen for a series is probably the 4th Grand Ninja War, which, and there's also the Ronka arc from Bleach. The fi its final arc, obviously. Dress Rosa, the current arc for Fairy Tale, and this arc is quite long in the manga. And I gotta say, they haven't adapted that many chapters in just like this arc has been going on officially in the anime since episode 85. So this arc's gone for 13 episodes, and you wonder how much they've covered in 13 episodes. They've only covered, like, let's see, out of the, let's see, I think it's, let's see, that's 
70, 71, 72, 73. Actually, that's 80 right there. Yeah, let's see. 70, 80, 81, 82, 83. Out of the 84 chapters so so far that's been produced for this current arc, this series has already covered pretty much like the first 18 chapters. Yeah, the first 18 chapters, just 133 to 151, and they've covered 169 and once, well, most of 170. Mm -hmm. So they've only covered, let's say, about 19 chapters so far. That's not too bad for just 12 episodes. Yeah, that's actually not too bad. Yep. Now let's move on to the newest chapter of the manga. Chapter 216. And yes, I do look up, see how much they covered for when it comes to this particular series. This is not the only series I've done it with. I've done it with One Punch Man. I looked it up with Attack on Titan. I don't do it particularly for Fairy Tale because they, they have generally they, they do pretty much have the whole thing for it. And I don't do it for One Piece either because they actually do list out how much they cover for it. So it just this series, One Punch Man, and I think that's it. That's as far as I can tell how much they cover. If you want to think of a series that doesn't cover that much the manga, or at least doesn't finish something a whole frickin' chapter, it's Tokyo Ghoul Re. Yeah. In 24 episodes, you expect them to cover 179 chapters. They don't. They don't even buy a thing chapter the whole entire manga. There's like large portions of chapters they've adapted. Now for the newest chapter of the manga for Black Clover. Power Balance. Chapter starts off with Asha basically be upset that... Like, Why is it that either the Clover can be destroyed or I'm going to end up dying? And, of course, Yumi's like, Master Diction's always on the point. Don't sweat it, kid. Why are we assuming I went up dead? What's the meaning of this? Ask the power of yours. Coming from a devil. Yeah, the viewers have pretty much known that since, since, he, since this character's pretty much showed up. So, yeah. So, basically confirming it for Asha. You mean that black, black and dis dis disgusting creep? Huh. And Noelle kind of agrees with it. Are you reading about it? And of course you have the same, and and we have the two women who two of the three women in love with Asha. Then he was like, "Is your body okay if you use the power like that?" I'm totally fine, although every last eleven last muscle hurts like crazy. I don't think that counts me up being totally fine, Asha. A devil, and Yumi's like a devil. Yikes, gross. Stay back. <laughs> Catch you, devil, at this. So and Asha's like, Captain Yumi, that was hard. Seriously. Your bluntness hurts, you know. <laughs> and then Julius basically like with the black horns. I just never sworn black horns. He had blacks to cover his body, but yeah. And then we see Nero with an Asha's fully Gamart, which the devil failed to acquire, resides a separate devil. And of course Julius has no idea who she is. Like, so this is these horns. So 500 years ago, in a seal of the devil, I received a curse, a curse of forbidden techniques, which includes turning into an anti-bird. Yep. Yeah, and of course, well, Julius, like usual, was basically geek for magic. Yep. And of course, uh, Asha basically talks about, like I said, you sorry about die me dying at this rate. Sorry about that. There are three countries that surround the Clover Kingdom. Through their scholars of sorcery and black magic possessing a powerful army, they have no reservations about human exploit, uh, experimentation, the, mil the militant nation of Diamond. By adapting their rich in the, the, the land rich in mana, they have mastered their own unique style of magic. Largely remain unseen. Natural. Yeah. This chapter's got lots of talking, but it does progress the story a little bit. Am I serving the ancient horror slubbers? <laughs> yeah. The, the mystery-filled winter country. The demon nation of Spade. Yeah, and they, they do show off basically what these kingdoms look like. Now, I had heard about the Diamond Kingdom and the Spade Kingdom, as they mentioned in the series. And I suspect it was a Heart Kingdom because, well, they're named after... Cards up, playing cards. 
Oh, and by the way, these teams do not basically shape like their their name suggest. Yeah, the Diamond Kingdom is basically a small little country over to the right. Clover Kingdom is to the south. North is speaking. Looks like it's the biggest of all three of them. The Heart Kingdom doesn't look that big either. From the size of them, it looks like the Diamond Kingdom is basically... I don't know. I, I'm trying to guess. I would say the Spade Kingdom is it's kind of similar to that of Russia, or at least wherever this country, these countries are. And they show off various people basically recovering from the elf stuff. Like, just basically their building. And everybody's still talking about it. Awful. <laughs> and of course, I mentioned the Magic Congress. Citing court, judge, and condemn the vet. We'll decide and move on to judge and condemn the devil's power. As scapegoat for your Magic Knight Squad, as a member of a lower class... I believe you, Asha, you most suitable. What? Magic Congress. Who's going to run that? The Royal House of Kira. Well done. <laughs> oh my goodness. And of course we have the King of the Clover King basically thanking Shiki for saving him. Seke. <laughs> of the Green Mantis. <laughs> they well done, of course. Yeah, this guy did pretty much nothing the whole arc. And then we have these random guys in white. It's Augusta Kira. We have come to claim your life. Who the hell are you? Yeah, that's what these guys say. That is not a good thing. We know that. This is all work of the age, age, I, the Midnight Sun. He has no idea what the heck is going on. And then something weird happens. Someone touches some scales. And apparently the magic is shrunk. And someone says, you are evil, Neil. And Karamana. And of course, and he asks, like, are you right, your highness? So with that, that reaction has finally appeared. In the name of the royal family, justice and justice, I will judge you, who are devil-possessed. I have no idea who this guy is. It's just some guy with some random hair. Yeah. So he takes out pretty much people who want to kill the King of the Clover Kingdom for some reason. Yeah. It's like we, we, we talked about stuff with Asha dying and of course the explanation. Now that stuff I found interesting in this whole chapter. And of course the cleaning up of what happened in the aftermath of the whole elves going and ruckus for the country. That thought was good. This ending is so bizarre. and comes completely out of nowhere. Yeah, Seke hanging out with the King of the Clover Kingdom. A character who barely did anything this whole arc. I mean, his only appearance prior to this was when Federal's brother attacked the palace. Aside from that, the character's never seen since then. What the heck the character's up to? Apparently, Seke protected him. At what point did that happen? Yes, it's kind of like... Read this chapter like, wow, it's a good chapter. Like, what? When the heck did this happen? Yeah. So apparently the Magical Congress is run by the royal family. Okay, that's interesting. But it looks like we're going to like have set up for a new arc. That's what it looks like for this chapter. That's what it looks like anyways. Mm -hmm. But yes. I'm going to give this chapter roughly a 9 out of 10. Especially that shocking ending. Mm-hmm. I hope this leads somewhere. I really do, okay? So yeah, that's it for this particular review. I'm really interested in next week's review, which is going to cover... Look like it's... From the teaser, like I said, it's going to cover about two chapters to finish up. It's going to cover chapters 171 and 172 to finish up 170, which is only about three pages left. Yep. My next review I'm going to do soon to be a review to the newest episode of Fairy Tale, okay? But do see you next view. Bye.